Right, so we, we have dealt with the architecture capability iteration in which we looked at the preliminary phase and aspects of the architecture vision. We're now moving into a little bit more detail around the architecture development iteration. And really that um, reinforces more of the ADM. So I'm going to just quickly summarize and uh, the, the technique we taught you how to draw the ADM originally. So remember we spoke about um, four bubbles or four circles, right? And then just do on your middle one, got the two pieces which sit on the side which make a bit of a cross and then all you do is you fill in the gaps like this. So a very interesting technique um, for you to memorize the crop circles. So really that's what we have now um, when it comes to the ADM, the architecture development method. So here's the preliminary phase and remember the architecture vision. So what we've just completed is looking at the architecture capability iteration, which is looking at the preliminary and architecture vision, which also touches on some of the governance pieces of managing your architecture discipline. Now what I want to focus on is I want to move down this section here. Right? So really that's looking sort of these three phases here. Although the architecture development iteration does move all the way around, we're going to be focusing on these three here, which is the business architecture um, phase. You then have the information systems architecture phase, and then you have the technology architecture phase. Now, all I want to say in this section here is really to deal with a repeatable pattern that occurs across these three, because you can get you can get lost in the quagmire of detail that will occur here within the framework. But there's really five things that you need to concern yourself with within this space. So let's take a look at it. First thing you want to do is you want to look at views and viewpoints. Right? and your stakeholders. So you know, aspects like the concerns of the stakeholders, all of those areas are what you want to begin to document here. So that's, that's number one. Right? Secondly, you then want to look at reference models. So we've, we've introduced reference models, and now you want to see, well, in order to address those concerns of the stakeholder, are there any reference models available that I can already use and consume? And if they're documented according to the uh, viewpoint description, it actually makes it quite easy to locate them. That's what speaks to the value of uh, building a standard model across an organization. Now, third, once I've looked at the reference models, I can now actually begin the architectural process. And I can say, well, what is my current state? In other words, what is my as-is environment? Now, re bearing in mind, depending upon which phase I'm in, uh, it'll be either a business architecture as-is, and in a data architecture as is, or an application architecture. But this is just the repeatable process, repeatable pattern that you're going to be using. And then number four, we're looking at uh, 2B, in the words, my future state. And then number five, we're looking at the gap. And in effect, there's some administrative stuff which could occur after that, which is you're checking it with the business and you're ratifying it and those types of things. But if you just remember that those five steps, those are the repeatable steps that are going to be occurring across the architecture development iteration. In other words, predominantly phase B, C, and D within your uh, ADM.